Welcome to my channel, my name is Matias. Today we're back with the Black Vortex crossover. So we're going to pick up where we left off in the previous video. So, we have Gamora and Beast who've gotten this incredible power upgrade thanks to the Black Vortex. And this sort of sparks a debate amongst the members of the X-Men and the Guardians that basically they have to destroy this thing because it seems to have some type of corrupting effect on those who get these power upgrades. So while this is being debated, Angel looks into the Black Vortex and he gets a cosmic upgrade. And what happens is Gomorrah and Beast get very protective over the Black Vortex and with Angel. They... So what happens is the Guardians of the Galaxy and the X-Men realize that the Black Vortex possibly has some type of corrupting effect. And they want to destroy it or hide it away somewhere. And while they're debating this, Angel looks into the Black Vortex. He gets this insane power upgrade. And Beast and Gomorrah immediately take the Black Vortex and hightail it out of there. They're out on the run. So we do have a brief skirmish between Gomorra, Beast, and Angel against the Guardians of the Galaxy and the X-Men. And it's not very clear why they're doing this, why they're taking the Black Vortex, why they've become so protective over it if the Black Vortex is sentient and pushing these characters to do these things. What is the end game? What's the end goal? Or why this Black Celestial created in the first place? What was his goals? It's never explained in this whole crossover. But now we have Gamora, Beast, and Angel on the run. They're being hunted down by Mr. Knife, the Guardians, the X-Men. And what happens is they actually get blindsided by the Kree who attack them. They're able to take them down, even though they're insanely powerful now. They're easily beaten by Ronan the Accuser. And the Kree steal the Black Vortex. The middle part of this crossover feels like a Benny Hill routine. You have a group of characters getting their hands on the Black Vortex, and then it gets stolen by another group of characters and then it gets stolen again by another group of characters and you just feel that they're doing this to have more and more filler in this crossover because here we have the introduction of Nova, Sam and Alexander into the story, Captain Marvel, also the young Cyclops, the time displaced Cyclops that's with the Star Jammers. So you add at least five or six issues to this story. So what finally happens is Mr. Knife is able to steal the Black Vortex back and now he's ready to execute his plan. So what he does is he exposes Thane, Thanos' son, to the Black Vortex and takes his powers up to 11, especially those weird amber stasis powers where you can freeze something in place. So what he does with the supercharged Thane is actually he makes him use his stasis powers on his home planet, on Spartax, the planet where he was the ruler too. He encases the whole freaking planet in amber. Now every single person on Spartax has been immobilized in case in Amber. And what Mr. Knife does, he offers the whole planet to the Brood who have made genetically modified drones that can eat through the Amber and infect everyone. So let's backtrack a little bit and talk about who is Mr. Knife that I actually already mentioned in a previous video. But the thing is, he's Star-Lord's dad. He used to be the Emperor to Spartax. He gets deposed. So to add insult to injury to his fall from power, he gets replaced by his son, Star-Lord and what Jason of Spartax, because that's the name of Mr. Knife, does, he forges an alliance with the Brood, he hatches up this plan of universal conquest, and he starts off with Spartax because he really wants to make his people pay. So now we have our heroes scrambling to save Spartax, and what our heroes actually do is they make Kitty Pride look into the Black Vortex, she goes all cosmic, and she phases the whole freaking planet out of the amber, foiling Mr. Knife's plan, I think it's like the third time she's done something like that, phase the whole planet, but it's super cool. So I'm going to leave this video here. Hope you guys liked it. This crossover, the middle part, totally skippable. The rest is pretty fun. See you guys next time. Bye.